Let's go to the rock carved city of Buddha in Bulgok Valley of Mount Namsan, Gyeongju. The long name is the official name of the Buddha. People here call it just the Grandma Buddha. It's early July. The green life force of grass and trees is bursting. It shouts out loud in unison, not satisfied with being simply green. The couple takes quick steps to pray to the Grandma Buddha. You may be afraid that they would be absorbed in green foliage. You may go through some bush tunnels before seeing the Grandma Buddha. Ferns may brush your feet like feathers. Once upon a time, a young man named Aso lived in a nearby village. Since his father died young, he had to work as a farmhand, and his mother also worked for wages. She had great faith in this Buddha. When she was sad or happy, she came to the Buddha. She was comforted and offered a prayer of her thanks. While praying, the only chant she murmured was the Bodhisattva of Great Compassion and Amitabha Buddha. She meant that she sincerely believed in the Bodhisattva of Great Compassion and Amitabha Buddha. That was all. Aso grew up enough to flow. He became a reliable young man. Frugally, he lived and bought a field. But his mother looked old because of her hard work every day. The children called her grandma in her neighborhood. She passed away at the early age to Aso's sadness. The place where Aso buried his mother was the valley covered with pines like this valley. Now you pass a deep bamboo tunnel. It signals that you wash up all the mundane dust in here. You've perhaps never seen such a high deck staircase. Now you begin to see the Grandma Buddha. The Grandma in her room, looking at you, seems to greet. Hi, you are coming now? One winter day, as usual, Aso climbed Mount Namsan to get firewood. The sky darkened suddenly and snow began to fall. He had to come down the mountain before the trail got slippery. When he passed by this Buddha, someone called Aso in a friendly voice. He was surprised to find his mother sitting on the rock. His mother wore thin summer clothes in the snow. Aso asked, why are you here when it's so cold? Not aware that his mother was dead, she said, I waited for you to come. Come here and warm up, honey. The place where his mother went was that niche. As he entered, he found no stone Buddha and that it was not a niche but a pretty deep and warm room. In the corner, there were also a spinning wheel and sewing tools that his mother used every day. I made the soup with Indian millet flakes for you, his mother said. She loved to make the soup on such a cold winter day. Aso ate it in one gulf and fell asleep in a warm corner for a while. He could perceive that his mother sat like a stone Buddha at the entrance. After a long time, Aso woke up because it was cold and found himself in his room in his house. How hard he tried, he couldn't call to his mind how he got home. When he looked outside, it gleamed with snow, and snow was a foot deep. His room was cold, for he didn't hit it. Aso suddenly missed his mother so much that he shed tears on his cheeks. He felt sorry that he didn't love his mother and make her comfortable in her life with all his heart. He sold his small land since and built a small temple in front of this Buddha. Little by little, he considered the Buddha his mother and loved and adored the stone mother for the rest of his life. His sincere faith 
and Buddha was also his filial piety. These fragments of red roof tiles here are from the temple he built. The people in the neighborhood began to call this Buddha Grandma Buddha from that time on, supposing that the spirit of Grandma, who had lived a good, honest, and faithful life, was transferred to the Buddha. Who sculptured the Buddha? How could he know there is a grandma in this triangular rock and take it out? Michelangelo once said that he heard someone begging to get him out of the rock. The sculptor's job was to chip off the stones and to get someone out. An artist who carved a Buddha on the rock tend to make a very shallow niche. Such a deep one is hard to see. The Buddha doesn't get wet in most of the snow and rain. The face may be the same as your grandma, who, when grandchildren come, hastily make their favorite food. The hood covers up to her ears. Her hands are in the sleeves. You can't see them, so you can't know the name of Buddha. In that respect, it resembles the Buddhas on the rock of Tapkok Valley of Mount Namsan. Scholars suppose that an artist made it in the first half of the 7th century, the early period for the Buddha in Mount Namsan. Grandma, are you embarrassed? Why are you looking down? Let's hear the sound that Buddha might have heard for over a thousand years. The Buddha seems to stop all the creatures' movement for a moment. It's as silent as in the deep ocean. The only thing that flows is thin, delicate sound. Isn't it, in a sense, the very sound of eternity? The sculptor who took the Buddha out of the stone wonderfully neglected one thing. He didn't make space for prayer. He's different from the person who installed the deck stairs down there. He should have cut the rock flat for Buddhists to worship on. It may be because there is another Buddha or Bodhisattva in the stone. It's time to leave your grandma. You don't like to go. But grandma may live many thousands of years in that position looking at that bursting green color and hearing that chirp, chirp sound. On your way down, you may see a sign saying, Second Temple Site. It means there used to be a temple here too. After seeing the Grandma Buddha, your heart may be warm and glad. You may suddenly miss all the people and their generous hearts.